Hello Internet, Seth Skorkowski, and today we'll be discussing a game that I've been looking forward to for a long time, and that is the Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart Kit, written by Mike Pondsmith and published by Artel Sorian Games in 2019. Cyberpunk Red is the newest edition of Cyberpunk, and I have been a massive fan of that game, specifically Cyberpunk 2020, for 20 years now, so I have been itching to get a look at this new version. However, the Jumpstart Kit isn't the full rules for Cyberpunk Red. It is a self-contained, fully playable starter set, which means that it's a trimmed-down, simplified version of what Cyberpunk Red will be once it releases. Now, for the sake of full disclosure, I was given this copy of the Jumpstart Kit by the publisher in exchange for a fair and honest review. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, answer the real question. What's in the box? Okay, opening the box up, the first thing we find is this little paraphernalia baggie of Q Workshop dice. Four six-sided and two ten-sided dice. Then comes the plastic bases for the cardboard standees, more on those in a bit. Next we get six pre-generated characters, and I'll of course go into those later on. Then a fold-out cheat sheet booklet, which I do find very handy, so thank you for that. A set of cardboard standees to use in your game if you don't have any miniatures, with the different characters and a few vehicles. Then we get a couple small double-sided fold-out maps that are marked with one-inch grids. It comes to four maps total, being two double-sided maps. Finally, we get to the books. We have the Jumpstart Kit rulebook. It's 44 pages long and the Jumpstart Kit World Book, which is 51 pages long. So if you buy the physical box, this is what you get. If you get the PDF version, then you get all the same stuff minus the dice. So let's go ahead and go through all this stuff, and then we'll cover the actual rules and how the game itself plays. With the dice, I have to admit that I'm not a fan. While they're certainly cool looking, I find them difficult to read in-game, especially the fours that are on the six die. I don't like symbols or placing numbers, but that's just a personal preference of mine, so take it as it is. The maps were a cool surprise. I do like them, but I find them a little small at 17 by 11 inches. Personally, I preferred two maps that were 17 by 22 inches. I think that it would have been more useful to use in-game since firearm ranges are so long, but since I wasn't expecting any maps at all, I can't criticize them too much. Three of the maps, the highway, the business office, and the nightclub will be handy when running the scream sheet adventures in the books. The standees are pretty neat. For the PDF, you're going to have to print them out yourself. Personally, I think for the printable version, I would have liked ones that could be folded over and taped into little A-frames or table tents. The art in the book is wonderful. Artel Sorian has always had great art, and it was one of those things that drew me into the world of Cyberpunk 2020 years ago, and the nice full-color art of Cyberpunk Red is top-notch. Alrighty, now that we've covered what's inside the box and the physical contents, let's get to the game itself, starting with the world. Cyberpunk Red takes place in the near alternate future of the 2040s. It's a time where warring mega corporations have destroyed much of the world's infrastructure, and the schism between the haves and the have-nots has widened even further. If you're familiar with Blade Runner or Altered Carbon, those are both wonderful examples of the feel of the cyberpunk world, so I recommend that you watch them. As always, cyberpunk is about style, and like its predecessor game, style just drips from this book. From the way the world and the rules themselves are phrased and approached, I absolutely love that about it. We get a fun list of slang terms the characters should use, getting all the players talking like edge runners. And I can tell you from experience that it doesn't take long before you start using these terms and talking to your friends both inside and outside the game. Which leads to that awkward situation where you go to work one day and one of your work buddies is all like, hey, what's going on? And you're all like, what's up, Chumba? And then you got to quickly make your escape from that situation before you're forced to explain just what the hell a Chumba is. Now on to characters. There are nine character roles in Cyberpunk Red, and you veteran players are going to find them very familiar. These roles are more character occupations than character classes like you would find in other games out there. Cyberpunk Red is a skill-based system. However, the Jumpstart Kit only gives us six of these nine in the form of pre-generated characters. The character sheets are pretty easy to follow, especially with this rules light version that we find in the Jumpstart Kit. They're very clearly broken down into sections. Stats and hit points skills, armor and weapons, character life path, which is your backstory and motivations, and then of course cyber gear and starting equipment. 
Coming in on the stats and hit points section, Cyberpunk Red has 10 stats, unlike the old CP2020 that had 9. I also really love that they broke decks and reflexes into two separate stats now. In the previous edition, and like with many tabletop games, dexterity sort of becomes a super stat because it affects so much, so therefore all the player characters have these dexes that are through the roof. The only problem that we had with it splitting it this way is that my players and I have played a ton of different tabletop role-playing games, and some games they refer to the single stat as dexterity, and others refer to it as reflexes, so we've always just used this term interchangeably, always meaning the same thing. So when we started playing red, we had to be very careful to make sure that we were going to be using the right stat or using the right term because uh, until our brains could learn how to differentiate the difference between them. To help you understand the differences between them, reflexes is reaction time and coordination. That's the stat that helps you out with initiative. It's the ability to see that punch coming before it clocks you in the jaw. Meanwhile, dexterity has to deal with how well you move your physical body, how athletic you are, and how agile you are. So yeah, your reflexes might tell you that punch is coming, but your dexterity is going to say how well you get out of the way before it catches you in the face. Now one thing that I find awesome with the quick start characters is this column right here. There are six sets of stats on the sheet, so players could roll or choose which set of stats their character has. This means you could have two players choose to play the same character role, like this fixer here for example, and one chooses this set and the other chooses this set. And because everything from skill modifiers to hit points are all directly affected by these 10 stats, you could have two very different player characters here. So this gives a lot of diversity to your group. And now with the six pre-generated characters that we've been given, each of those having six sets of stats, that means we have a potential of 36 different player characters that your players could choose from. However, because the starting equipment is going to be the same, such as all the fixers would have the same starting equipment, all the solos would have the same starting equipment, I would suggest that game masters, if you do have two players, Players that want to play characters that belong to the same role that you know you step in and maybe kind of swap around what some of their starting gear is you know give them maybe different weapons or a little bit different gear that way they're not exactly the same as far as what they're carrying and while I'm touching on equipment I would have loved some basic prices for some of the equipment that the characters can buy there are no prices that are given in the books for things such as you know weapons and armor or other equipment like that which does detract from paying your player characters for a job well done if they ain't got no gear or toys to spend that money on. Now for hit points, hit points are based off of your body stat. So if you have a body of 6, you multiply that by 5, and now we have 30 hit points. At half, in this case 15, your character is seriously wounded, meaning that you now have a minus 3 to perform all skill checks. Then, once your character reaches 0 hit points, you have to make a death save of rolling under your body stat, which in our case is 6, or the player character dies. And you do this every single round and it gets lower by one point every single round until either you die or somebody comes along and heals you. But in the meantime, all of your skill checks you have a minus five on. And if you're asking yourself, is 30 hit points a lot of hit points in Cyberpunk? To put this into perspective, an assault rifle does 5d6 points of damage per bullet. That's enough damage to take your perfectly healthy character and drop him into the critically wounded category with a single bullet. And the three round burst can hit you three times per squeeze of the trigger. That's enough damage to send your dead ass off to the body bank to get sold off for spare parts. And there ain't no raisin level and now you get more hit points and you're somehow more impervious to death. No, that is all the hit points that your character is going to get. So the way to survive in the cyberpunk universe is to either one, play smart, or two, invest in some good body armor, preferably both. We'll explore more of that in a bit, but first let's look at game mechanics. As I said earlier, Cyberpunk Red is a skill-based game, meaning that characters can do all skills. It's just that their character role determines which ones they start out better at, but anyone can attempt any skill at any time without penalty. The only exception being Interface, which only Netrunners can do. I do find that as a complaint since I'd prefer it if all characters had the option to do all skills and not just make that available to only one role, so instead I would prefer it if everybody could Interface, just that Netrunners have a higher likelihood 
likelihood of doing it a whole lot better than anyone. The full Cyberpunk Red rules will be giving each of the roles their own unique ability, which I do find unfortunate that there are going to be exclusive skills like that, but we'll just see how it works once the full rules release. I can't really comment on it one way or the other. I don't know how it's going to look. But for the Jumpstart Kit, Interface is the only exception that anybody can do any skill. So each skill has its own related stat that it ties to. So if your character wanted to perform a skill check, then you add the character stat, which is going to be somewhere between 1 and 10. Then you add the skill level, which is going to be somewhere between 0 and 10. Then you roll a d10 and you total all that up and that's the result. If the total of all that is greater than the difficulty value for that specific task, then you succeed. Congratulations! And we get a full list of difficulty values ranging from basic all the way up to legendary. Of course, player characters are very rarely in ideal conditions, so we also have a list of some sample modifiers if we haven't got the right tools or we're trying to perform some task in secret. Now, some skills are done as opposed roles, where a player character is trying to beat another player character, usually an NPC, and combat is a good example of when we're going to be doing a lot of opposed roles. So for opposed roles, each character is going to make a skill check in the appropriate skill, and the winner of that, whoever gets the highest, is going to be the winner. So for example, if you were trying to lie past somebody's human perception or trying to sneak quietly past somebody's normal perception, both parties make their role and the one who scores higher wins ties all going to the defender. Because all skills are available to all player characters, one complaint that I do have is that I would like it if in the character sheet there was a full list of all the available skills instead of just what they have, which is a list of the skills that they already have points in. The reason for that being is that a player, especially a new player, might not attempt a certain skill at a certain time because they don't know that's an option simply because that it's not on their character sheet and they're not aware of it. So Game Masters, I strongly encourage you to print this list up and give it to all of your players, you know, that way they know what the full range of options that they have are. Now one thing that I absolutely dig about the Jumpstart rules is cultural familiarity, which is the general knowledge that a character with a high education has. This means that a character with a very high education will know a little bit about everything, essentially meaning that they might have a 1 or a 2 or even a 3 in all skills. Hopefully the full rules will explain how we do improvements in addition to that, but we'll see them when they come out. Last thing I want to touch on in this mechanic section is fumbles. In the previous edition of Cyberpunk, fumbles are just all too common and they could lead to some disastrous results, but with this version, with Cyberpunk Red's Jumpstart Kit, that is not the case. Instead of fumbling every single time you roll a 1, instead, if you try to do a skill check and you roll a 1, you simply roll a second d10, you subtract that amount from whatever your result was, and that's what your actual final result is. In some cases, that might mean that your character still gets a success, but for those, I house ruled that it's still very clearly a screw up. Everybody watching knows that they made a mistake, but they still somehow managed to pull it off. I also house ruled that if the resulting total was zero or less, and then that case it was a true fumble and something disastrous happened, which means a few of the weaker NPC goons ended up shooting themselves or each other as a result. I hope that the expanded rules once they're released do something like that, but for all you old CP2020 veterans, they did fix fumbles. Now let's look at Cyber, making us harder, faster, better, stronger, as they say. In the Jumpstart Kit, we get a decent selection of Cyber, from Cyber Eyes, Audios, Limbs, and Cyber Weapons. It's not a lot, and it's certainly less than the old CP2020 fans are used to, but since, once again, this is just a quick start set, this selection works, there will be more, of course, in the full Cyberpunk Red rules. Now, one area that's only hinted at, not explained at all in the Jumpstart Kit rules, is Cyber Psychosis. And that's when somebody keeps putting so much silicon and so much metal inside their head that they begin losing their grip in reality, and then the max tech unit has to get called out to deal with them. So these are some very limited cyber tech rules, but I really look forward to seeing what the full rules have once they release. Next is net running, where your console cowboys get to plug their brain into the net, hacking and battling other net runners and black ice programs with deadly results. I've been very critical of the old net running rules from the older edition, but net running in Cyberpunk 2020 is absolutely wonderful. It is very different than it was before, it's fast, it's a lot of fun, and it's super dangerous for your net runner. The only problem that we had when we were trying to run it is that the Jumpstart Kit didn't make it 100% clear how movement in net space works, as in how far a character can move in any given round. Uh, so there was a little confusion there. It was a very minor detail, but I might as well mention it. Other than that, net running was a screaming success. And now on to one of my favorite parts of cyberpunk, combat. 
I have always loved the combat mechanics from the earlier editions, and for those familiar with it, you are still going to recognize the heart and soul of it in there, but it is also very, very different. The trimmed down combat rules that come with the jump stock kit are referred to as the Thursday Night Throwdown, and this is pretty different than the Friday Night Firefight or the Saturday Night Slugfest that we had in 2020, but there's a lot more than that. There's also the Sunday Night Slaughter, the Monday Night Massacre, the Tuesday Night Tussle, and then you got Wash Day Wednesday. And that's when all us edge runners, we go down to the Washateri and we get all the blood and the grime out of our clothes before next Thursday rolls around. Our weekly calendar in the dark future is really busy. In my How to Learn a New RPG video, I talked about learning and testing games combat mechanics with a combat practice session. Just a back and forth trying to figure out all the different aspects until both of you feel that you've gotten it down. That way, once you get to your first adventure, you and another player at least have a basic understanding of how combat works, and that way it can work a lot smoother for everybody. So one personal joy for me when we were testing the Cyberpunk Red combat system is that I did this with my buddy Jesse, who 20 years ago, back in 1999, he and I sat down with the exact same three miniatures and practiced learning the Cyberpunk 2020 combat system. So that was a fun experience getting to do that again with him once we were learning Cyberpunk Red. Now, I don't know exactly exactly how this combat system is going to work once the full rules system comes out. Once again, this is a fast and dirty combat system in order to get players really deep down into it, and there are going to be a lot of missing details, and they've told me as much that there's some missing details. So let me just jump on some of the big points when looking at the jumpstart rules. Weapon ranges are laid out on this chart, giving the difficulty values to hit a target at various distances. So with SMGs and rifles, for example, you can see that they start off the same, both at difficulty 15. And then they diverge as the range increases. So at 51 meters, the SMG is difficulty 25, while the rifle is 15. Okay, now, but now we get to three round burst. And with those weapons, you can see an increase in accuracy at low ranges, and then at higher ranges, it increases the difficulty to hit. So yes, while I really do love that it does that, the only problem that we had when we were running this in-game is having to go back and keep referencing this chart back and forth depending on how far away they were, and then determining if we needed to use a different chart, if the character was going to be using a three-round burst or not. So uh, that slowed us down a little bit when we were trying to do combat. Personally, I think this was more of a result of all the combat rules getting shrunken down into a smaller bite-sized form, but I would have preferred it if it had just given us the modifiers for different range increments instead of trying to lay all out the total numbers on a chart. Uh, that might just be me and my group that had that issue. You know, we're all coming from years and years of playing the old cyberpunk, which just used modifiers. So we had kind of had to unlearn what we had learned before, and that might have just been what screwed us up, but it did catch us, so I'm going to go ahead and mention it. While we're talking about guns, one small complaint that I have is that all the guns in the jump start kit don't have any ammo capacity listed. I'd have liked something more on that, because when we're doing extended firefights, especially firefights where three-round bursts are being employed, you're going to be chewing through ammo really, really fast. And having limited bullets and having to stop and reload or deciding if you need to start doing single shot because your three-round burst is chewing through your ammo too fast, that can really change the strategies on how you play. Another big difference is hit location. In the older editions, you roll to see where a bullet struck once you hit somebody, you know, like the arm or the leg or the torso or the head. And then you had to go against the armor of that specific area, such as the armor on your arm versus the damage the bullet had. Uh, so that way, if you're wearing a vest, it only protects your torso, but your arms, legs, and head are still open for damage. But in the jump start rules, there are no random hit locations. Headshots can be aimed for, but there's never that lucky shot that just happens to get the guy in the head doing double damage. The thing that gets me now is that armor is applied all over the body. Like your character wants to wear a leather jacket, that's cool, that's four points of armor on your body. But why does it also give you armor on the head? It's a jacket, not a gimp mask. And in all that great art that they have in the book, those characters aren't all sporting armor on their heads. Part of the style and fun of cyberpunk has always been trying to weigh the personal safety of armoring your head versus the desire to show off that sweet haircut. I really do like that the minuses for being injured are far less dramatic than they were in the previous editions, you know, where they had the huge death spiral and it very quickly took characters out of commission. So that is great. I like that a lot. 
But at the same time, there's no system shock save where a character might get momentarily stunned whenever they take damage. There's also a distinct lack of rules when it comes to cover. You know, how much armor might a wall or a door do if a character is hiding behind it, or how much more difficult are they to hit if they're you know, halfway covered by a brick wall. We had a lot of fun playing with this combat system. It is lethal and it is far faster than its predecessors were. Uh, so please understand when I'm criticizing it, we still had an absolute blast playing it. But at the same time, it just doesn't have that stylized pulpy feel that its predecessors had. You know, where a player character might pick up two guns and go jumping through the air with them. That for me was really my biggest disappointment with the jump start rules. You know, things like taking cover or firing while running, but now you're getting minuses to shoot somebody, but now you're harder to hit because you're running. Those were the things that really set Cyberpunk above the other combat systems in different tabletop role-playing games. The economy of balancing all of those pluses and minuses really encouraged players to you know, interact with their surroundings and move, rather than just standing in one place, mindlessly swinging their weapon round after round until the bad guy dropped, like so many other games out there do. Now, again, I'm not sure if it's going to be like this once the full combat rules come out and the full Cyberpunk Red rules. Maybe they'll bring back some of those pulpy elements, and I sincerely hope that they do. Finally, let's talk about the adventures. The Jumpstart Kit is a full game in a box, and what would that be without some adventures to run and show your game masters and players what playing Cyberpunk Red is all about? We have one short scenario, The Apartment, which I have run and I will be reviewing on a different video. We also get three screen sheet mini scenarios that each run two to three pages. I like what I've seen with those, but my only disappointment is that all of the scenarios focus very heavily on combat, rather than focusing on some of the interpersonal skills and all the other skills that are available to player characters. Being an introductory box set as this is, I'd have wanted some good examples of the different ways that players could use the non-combat skills and show players and game masters how those can be very useful. So I would have liked one of them to clearly show that sure, yeah, combat might be the option to get out of this, but if you employ your interpersonal skills, your other skills like that, that's clearly a better way to go. Overall, I really did like the Jumpstart Kit. It's designed to be sort of a playable sample of what Cyberpunk Red is going to be, and it definitely whetted my appetite to see more. You can pick the Jumpstart Kit up from Amazon or DriveThruRPG if you just want the PDFs, and of course from our Telsorian's website, links below. I suggest you give it a look. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of our stuff, like game reviews or RPG philosophy, just hit that subscribe button. So next time, Chumbas, you have a great day. You know, I heard or read in an interview somewhere that Mike Pondsmith does a color scheme in his head whenever he's writing a new edition of Cyberpunk. You know, CP2020 was black and V3 was green and Cyberpunk red is, of course, you know, red. So in a way, that makes Cyberpunk the Johnny Walker of RPGs.